Good news everyone, it's the holiday season and I can finally reunite it with my microphone. Although I will still be busy working, but at least I can make content faster and easier this time. As usual, today we will discuss about a new singer, an s rank Umbra singer to be precise, which is Adela. Since Darren Spanner, there hasn't been any new meta or game changing singer lately. At the end, Raven is great, but none of them can really outshine Irene. I mean, yeah, they could outshine Irene, but not in a really large margin. Drea? I did say that she's great and probably the best radical currently in Chinese server, but to unleash her true potential, you will need an also huge resource to build her team. Attila herself is a physical damage dealer and I do really hope that she could become the new game changer here. So let's start from Attila's anima intensify. When there are no other sinner within a cross shape range around Attila, gain a 15% increase in crit rate. This skill's usefulness will depend on Attila's playstyle that we will discuss later on. Usually, we will let our Umbras to go wild and break any cores possible on the field which suits the playstyle of most Umbra, especially Umbras that deals massive damage from their skills instead of basic attacks. Moving on is Adela's ultimate, Manic Parper. This ultimate looks pretty similar to Serpent's ultimate, but instead of costing 27 energy, Adela's ultimate costs 30, so I do expect something from Adela's ultimate. Adela deals 1200 physical damage and 1 core damage to all enemies inside skill range, and then she enters Mad Scissor state and gain 30 marks. The maximum marks limit is increased to 45. Now let's talk about the Mad Scissor state. Whenever Adela deals basic attack damage to an enemy, she consumes 3 marks and inflicts an additional 180 physical damage to that enemy. This effect can trigger crit damage and it depends on Adela's crit rate and crit damage modifier. For the cost of more energy consumption on her ultimate, we can deal slightly more base ultimate damage compared to Serpent and also activating Adela's Mad Scissor state. From reading this ultimate ability, we can make a conclusion that we cannot compare Serpent's ultimate with Adela's. The reason is pretty clear. Serpent's kit advanced in dealing huge AoE damage while on the other hand, Adela focused more in single target DPS. And because of this, we cannot really compare Serpent's skill with Adela's skill. However, before we jump even further, I have to mention this first. Adela has pretty similar stats compared to Bayi by a pretty small margin with Adela having higher attack while Bayi having higher HP. Now for Adela's first passive, Blades and Traces, gain 40% crit rate. During the duration of Mad Scissor state, whenever Adela lands a crit hit, there is a 50% chance for her to regain 1 mark. Additionally, when an allied singer lands a crit hit, there is a 30% chance for Adela to regain 1 mark as well. This effect has a 1 second triggering interval. Now this is really massive because at first I thought like, isn't 30-45 mark is pretty low when every time Adela deals basic attack it consumes 3 mark. But this passive actually helps Adela in solving this issue. We can actually slap Attila with attack speed or, even better, crit rate buffs whether it's from Rembrandt or any other sources, even though Gacha is still involved here. But at the beginning we discussed about Adela's anima intensify which doesn't really suit a sinner that focusing more on basic attack damage. Well, the reason is because I'm worried that Adela is squishy that she might be dead without receiving heals for a certain amount of period while dealing basic attacks. But after I check her stat which is defensive enough then I would say that her anima intensify is pretty fine and she can live without heal for a certain amount of period. Anyways, let's quickly move on to Attila's second passive, resolving past worries. During the duration of Mad Scissor state, for every 3 marks consumed, Adela gains a 10% increase in crit damage. This effect can stack up to a maximum of 8 times and last until Adela exit Mad Scissor state. So far, I think Adela's kit pairs really well one and another. It's somewhat simple, yet it also brings a huge impact on how good the sinner will perform. 
Now every sinner has their own weakness and Adela has her own weakness as well. First, she really sucks on dealing with multiple enemies at once. Second, if you want to unleash her true potential, her marks will actually hold her potential down because you won't be able to rely on her first passive which requires a good RNG if you want Attila to stay on her state much longer. If you think those are the only weakness, you'll be very wrong because Adela also has a third weakness which for some people might be an advantage. You guessed it, she's kinda pay to win. I think pay to win isn't the correct word here but high investment, high reward. And because of this we have to talk about Adela's shackles. Here are Adela's shackles. Usually I say that the first shackle always the most valuable shackles and because of this most characters requires only their first shackles to be really great. However, in Adela's case, her third shackles actually makes her really, really good. But before that, I have a few things to say about whether you should pull or skip her. In my opinion, if you are new to the game, then I don't think you should pull the sinner because she can unleash her true potential when dealing with boss enemy and she needs high investment. If you have reached somewhat endgame but you are on a tight budget, then you can pull for her first shackle only because although it's not her best shackles, it still gives Adela a higher chance to not exit her state due to her mark reaches zero or you can also skip her if you want. But with Adela's third shackles, you allow Adela to gain her mark way way more often. Remember that on her first passive, Adela gains mark only if she lands crit, and the crit rate buff that you gain from Adela's kit is only 55% so it's not a guarantee. Of course, not pulling for Adela is way better than getting her with no shackles because she relies on her shackles a lot. So it's between a skip or at least first shackles. Of course, don't forget her exclusive cram brand. Adela's cram brand gives Adela a 40% crit damage buff. Adela jumps into the designated 3x3 three three area and launches 5 attacks, each dealing 400% physical damage to the enemy within the skill range who has the lowest current percentage of HP. This damage is considered as basic attack and cannot trigger crit hit. I don't understand this is a thing in Adela's kit. The reason why I said this is that if you use this exclusive crime brand then you're literally wasting 15 mark for using this ECB, which force player to use this ECB wisely depending on the situation, also depending on your shackles. If you have Adela's third shackles then the best way to use her exclusive crime brand is to pop her ultimate and then immediately use her exclusive crime brand. This allow Adela to gain instant 50% crit damage buff from her second passive because her exclusive crime brand is considered as a basic attack. Few shackles or lesser Adela owner will gain lesser benefit from this exclusive crime brand. Small spoiler about the next sinner which is the red haired catalyst. I heard that she probably won't be a meta and will likely skippable so you will most likely pull for Adela or skip her instead. But we'll see since I haven't even read her skills at all so stay tuned. Anyways that's all for today, goodbye.